All right. So before uh, before we go to Susan, Allie, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on, uh, what's happening right now? The the inflation came out super high yesterday. The stock market tanked. Everyone's panicking. Yes. What the hell's yeah. going on? Uh, yeah, everyone is panicking a little bit. Um, rates are kind of increasing. They have been since probably mid to end of last week. The the mortgage rates tend to be a little bit ahead. They anticipate this and they kind of proactively increase. We're sitting around 6% and that's with a point. Um, so definitely higher than when we were seeing in the low fives about two, three weeks ago. Um, so rates are definitely increasing. And then, um, you know, that causes people to shop around more. People are starting to look at different lenders. They're starting to uh, bid against each other. Um, we're seeing a lot of people getting multiple, multiple credit pulls by different companies. Um, and all that does is kind of clog it up for you guys. You know, it makes this frustration at the beginning of the process of them, you know, shopping around, trying to get the best deal um, and confusion and noise too. There's a lot of um, people out there who are buying credit pulls and then they are using that to call clients and confuse them further. Um, so your clients are getting 10, 15 spam calls a day from people saying, well, I can beat that rate. I can beat that rate. Um, and so it's just, it's a really unfortunate time for buyers. There's a lot of confusion and noise. Um, we're trying to get ahead of it by um, kind of getting that annoying stage out of the way at the pre-approval process and hoping that by the time that they get to actually getting under contract, the noise is quieted down. They trust us. We've built a relationship. Um, and then, you know, we can do what we do best and that's get them closed really quickly. Yeah, I think some are getting knocked out too. Once it got up to six, like, you know, yeah. I had a listing where, you know, they really had to go back and look like, what is this monthly payment for us? And, and then some didn't write because of it. Yeah. So it's really knocked some buyers kind of either down a notch or out of the game completely, I think. So to be at six, it's a big yeah, it really, it, payment, you know, it, for somebody who's still kind of stretching already, you know, but. totally. And it even, um, you know, we we're trying to get ahead of it too, by asking at that pre-approval process, even if this isn't a house you want to make an offer on, shoot us a, an address so we can put something together so that before you guys even show them houses, they have an idea of, okay, this is what a house in my price range looks like. This is what the out of pocket is. This is what the payment is because then maybe they decide right at that point and you don't waste time for a month showing them 15 houses that they end up being like, oh God, this is too expensive at the end. Um, so we do try and get ahead of that too. And sometimes we'll work with you guys. We'll say, hey, send us an ad an address of a house that's on their search list or whatever. Um, so we can just kind of show them the reality because they look online and they, they're seeing oh, the payment's $1,500. And then we're like, well, <laughs> it's really not. Um, and so we're running into a lot of that. And a lot of out-of-state lenders who just get it wrong. You know, they're missing a tax bill. They're missing half the closing costs. Um, and then buyers end up really unhappy at the closing table. So we're really trying to stay ahead of it as best we can. But we'd appreciate it from you guys too, if you can say, hey, at least talk to the local guy because they're going to be honest. They're going to be upfront and they're going to be accurate. And don't answer the other calls. Yes, don't recognize yes. the number. Don't even. We've pick it added up. <laughs> a disclaimer to our emails with when we send out a pre-approval now that says, "Hey, there are some bad lenders out there. They're they're going to call you. It's just you know, it's not us selling your information. It's the credit bureaus. Um, if it's not directly from one of us on our team, you can ignore it. You know, it's not. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to add that disclaimer as going forward too, because they're sneaky. It's crazy. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of mortgage companies that are closing uh, because yeah. they just leverage leverage the refi boom, and yeah. it's, it's just hard. It's hard for them to compete. A lot of layoffs. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's an interesting time for sure. Um, thankfully, we have our same support staff. No one's gone anywhere. Our team's still all working hard, and we're down a little bit, um, but we have enough, you know, relationships that we haven't thankfully taken too big of an impact. The good thing is that um, because we haven't had those layoffs and it is a little bit of a downturn, our turn times are speedy fast. We're getting things underwritten the same day. You got, you got mine done so fast. The buyer's like, yeah. I mean, 10 ready, days if we need an appraisal, yeah. seven if we yeah. don't, so it's fast. wild. Yeah. yeah. Who are you yeah. with, Ellie? Cross country mortgage. Okay. Yep, yeah. and we're in Michigan. Um, I have two offices here in Michigan, but we are nationwide. We just closed a, um, a loan for Danielle. Is she on the call? 
No. Uh, in Virginia. No, Washington. Oh, Virginia. Yeah. Washington, D.C. area. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah, D.C. area. Yeah. yeah. We just closed awesome. one for her in like three weeks. Cool. So, yeah. All right. Do you work with, do you work with Buckeye fans? <laughs> no, we, do, we do. Yes, we do not discriminate. Our headquarters is actually in Cleveland. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Allie. Allie, All right. Thank you, you so much. Office in Indiana. Do you have an uh, office in Indiana? I'm certain we do. I don't know where it is. Um, we do have actually someone in my office licensed in Indiana. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Curious. Cool. I always like your updates. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> Bye you. guys. Bye. All right, guys. Well, we have a hard stop at 11. So we're going to get started with our agent attraction 101 part two. Mm -hmm. And um, we are lucky to have Susan McLean on with us again. She is, Susan, why don't you explain uh, introduce yourself to everybody that doesn't know you and we'll let yeah. you get started. Yeah, happy to. So um, I am uh, Susan McLean. My official title with EXP is Network Specialist. So essentially what that means is I work with the large networks. Um, if you're with EXP, you're familiar probably with the alphas and the betas. That's typically who I work with um, and th those networks. And I help with everything around agent attraction, increasing agent productivity and agent retention. So three really big buckets that um, I work with uh, those large networks on. So I've been in real estate for 19 years. Um, next month, it'll be 19 years. So um, I've been mostly in agent development and leadership positions. So I've been a real estate coach, a trainer, managing broker. I was vice president of sales for the number seven Century 21 franchise in the world. Um, I was director of sales for Remax Integra in the Midwest region. Um, I, for this part um, of what we're doing today on Agent Attraction, I have personally recruited hundreds of agents, um, most of those not to EXP in my, you know, previous 18 years before I joined EXP, but um, have a very extensive background in recruiting agents. We now call it attracting, but, you know, to me, it's always recruiting. So um, have recruited tons of agents and it's, you guys, it's all about relationships and that's kind of what we'll talk about today. So we talked last time a lot about goals and how do you set your attraction goals. Today, we're really going to focus more on who are you calling and what are you actually saying, right? So those are the two big questions is, oh, I don't even know who to call and I don't know what to say when I call them. So that's where we're going to start today. Sound good? All right. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. So let's talk about your list. Um, who has, who knows what the wealth chart is? The EXP Realty wealth chart. You guys have a wealth chart? Yes. Are, is it where you can see it? Is it up in front of you all the time? The wealth chart is one of the best things when it comes to tracking your numbers and who you're calling and who you want to call next. So if you're not familiar, and I should have pulled one up this morning, but if you're not familiar with the wealth chart, um, if you just go to Brent Gove's webpage, Brent Gove has a free download of the wealth chart. And the wealth chart is just a great way to keep track of who's in your organization, um, who do you want to be in your organization. So I always wanna start everything by saying, that's a great, great thing, excuse me, to have in front of you at all times. So now who's your list? Who are you going to attract into your network at EXP? So your target list, um, I would say, number one, identify who you want to work with. We talked a little bit about this last time, but who is your ideal agent that you want to work with? Julie and I had a conversation about, what, 20 minutes ago, probably, and we talked about, you know, who her ideal avatar is, right? Who's that ideal agent that she wants to work with? We are typically best equipped to help the person that we used to be. So if you've been in real estate for a year, you might be best equipped to help agents who are brand new in the industry. If you've been in real estate for 19 years, like I have, you might be you know, best equipped to help experienced agents. So kind of think about who your ideal agent is that you would wanna work with. We talked last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago on part one, you know, my ideal agent is someone who is um, positive. They understand we're stronger as a team than we are as individuals. Someone who understands, you know what, I don't want any drama within our network. Um, I want to work with agents who are all rowing in the same direction. So kind of figure out who that ideal agent avatar is. And then your list. I want you to come up with a list of agents that fit that avatar. Ideally, 100 agents, which sounds like, oh my gosh, Susan, are you kidding? Who has time to find a list of 100 agents? But you guys, we do this in real estate, right? What's the first thing you did when you got your real estate license? First thing we all do. What is it? Build your database. Right. We make a list of our friends and family, right? 
you're doing the exact same thing. It's literally selling real estate and attracting real estate agents is literally the same job. It's just who you're targeting and what you're saying. What you're saying is a little bit different, but ultimately it's the exact same job. So if I'm selling real estate, I'm educating my potential clients on how I can help them achieve their goals. If I'm attracting agents, I'm educating real estate agents on how I can help them achieve their goals or how my network and how this company can help them achieve their goals. It's literally the same job. So I want you to start your database, get a list of 100 agents that you want to work with. This isn't a download of, I'm gonna to go to my MLS and I'm gonna download 100 names. Get your ideal agent avatar and find agents in your marketplace who fit that list. Put them in your database, right? And then what are we gonna do with them? What are we gonna do with that list? We're gonna call, text, or DM every single one of them. Right? I'm gonna tell you what to say in a second because it depends on how you know them, but you're gonna call every single one of them. By the way, if you can get 200 names, you get a gold star, right? You're gonna have a minimum of 100, but I would love to see you have 200 names in your list of your ideal agents that you wanna work with. So you're gonna call, text, or DM all of them. And after that conversation, and we'll get into how you know them and what you're gonna say, but after that conversation, you're gonna do three things. Number one, you're going to grade them on a scale of one to 10. How well do you know them? A one means that, you know what, we, uh, I, I just saw their name in my MLS and I, I've heard that they're a good agent. A 10 means that you're going to go to dinner with them, right? Because you're good friends with them. So scale of one to 10, how well do you know them? Scale of one to 10 is how interested they are in EXP. A one would be, you know what, I'm calling my buddy Bob. And Bob's like, hey, Susan, what's up? Don't talk to me about EXP, but what's up, <laughs> right? A 10 would be, I call Bob and Bob's like, hey, I've been meaning to talk to you. I, I wanna talk about EXP, right? So one to 10, how well I know them, one to 10, how interested they are in EXP. And the last thing I'm going to track after all of these texts, calls or DMs is when will I touch base with them next? Is that in a week? Is that in a month? If they're a number one on interest and they're like, hey, I like you as a person, but don't talk to me about EXP, I'm gonna say it's four months. My minimum that I'll wanna follow up with someone is every four months because someone who's really happy now in four months, their broker might do something that's completely changed their perspective. Their business might change, their personal life might change, their brokerage might get bought by another brokerage, right? So at a minimum, I'm going to follow up with, them, with everyone at least every four months. So what you're doing is you're taking three to five hours per week is what your agent attraction should take, right? If you're just, if you're doing agent attraction and you're selling and, you know, you're growing your team or whatever you're, you've got going on in your life, if this isn't your full-time job, three to five hours a week is what you can devote to this. And you that three to five hours a week can turn into huge dividends if you actually take the time to do that. So your list of 100 or 200 people turns into five or 10 or 20 people every week that you're following up with based on that initial conversation. Does that make sense? Any questions so far before we get into what do we actually say? Oh, let's talk about who, so we talked about ideal agents, right? Your ideal agent avatar. But let's also talk about, um, I wanna give you just a couple of um, segments of people who might be really good for you to reach out to right now, right? So number one, underperforming agents. So um, underperforming agents right now, especially in a normalizing market that we're in right now, they're looking to either get out of the business, they're looking to join a team, they're looking for more guidance. So you can help them, right? If they're underperforming. And you can typically in your MLS, you can look for those agents who aren't selling a whole lot of real estate or look for agents whose business um, has gone down in the last 12 months, six to 12 months. So underperforming agents. Um, and I really like, so when it comes to people who need additional help, I like the power of the modern team that we have at eXp, right? Because we can be a modern team, which means they get all the benefits of being on a team without the drawbacks, and I call them drawbacks, they're not always, but you know, with, without the drawbacks of being a team member, without the drawback of having to put my contracts in my team leader's name, without the drawback of having additional splits or fees that go out because I'm a team member. 
So we have this modern team concept at EXP, which is our networks that we're building, right? So you're underperforming agents. That's a huge opportunity for agent attraction right now. Your small to mid-sized independent brokers. So it's, that's a huge opportunity for agent attraction. In a normalizing market, changing market, broker owners get nervous, right? Especially as interest rates are going up. We're seeing more and more agents get out of the business because real estate isn't falling into our laps like it used to. So as agents are getting out of the business, as inflation is hitting and it's costing them more to run their office, pay their staff, you know, keep the lights on, buy paper for the copier, even coffee's more expensive, right? They start to get nervous. Typically their margins are very thin anyway. If I'm a broker owner, I have very thin margins. And so in a changing market, they get nervous. That's a huge opportunity for agent attraction right now. New agents, that's another great, great opportunity. So we are, we are still seeing new agents get into this business and they need a clear path, path to success. If you are, if you can show them that path to success, this is what I've done. This is what our company offers. You can be very successful in attracting new agents. And then lastly, the other opportunity I see is agents with a growing business, but no support. So agents who, you know, they did 3 million last year, this year they're on track to do 5 million, but they're at a, at a brokerage where the broker owner is selling and super busy and that broker owner's doing 20 million on his or her own and they're not getting that support. Okay, so who did I miss? Did I miss any other areas of opportunities? For what about like teams within brokerages? And I know they don't have the financial responsibility um, that an uh, indie broker would but I still think that's a really good opportunity um, as agents are, like you said, maybe getting out of the business and all of a sudden that whole thing's kind of falling apart and, or maybe they, their lead generation sources aren't what they used to be and they're, they can't make it rain. And, you know, they're, they're I looking think, for more support for, for I, as a team, as a leader of a team within a brokerage. I think one of the big reasons why that is a key, you know, group to go after is that, if I'm a team leader, I have a team of six or seven agents and I'm with Remax and I spend all this time building my team. And then all of a sudden, one of my team members leaves and stays with Remax, but leaves my team. All the time and effort I've put into that agent is gone. Switch to EXP and now your strategy can change as you can grow your team, but then you can kind of push people off the team once they get their production up and there's you're still making revenue share on them and they and they're still with your company but they're just not on your personal production team so it's really the best of both worlds and it turns a team leader by switching to exp into a it's just almost the same as being your own broker without the liability mm -hmm. yes that's very very good point both of you guys and lee i was going to say that exact same thing so there's a ton of turnover. Team members are constantly leaving, right? And so when they leave at a tra traditional brokerage, then that team leader gets nothing. So that's a huge opportunity. So there's a team that um, just came over from a Century 21 office in um, California, just came over to EXP. And that team leader, um, he had, what, 10 agents, I think, on his team. And that team leader is actually making that transition where he's taking his team his team members and he's putting them on their own. So he's growing this modern team, right? Where they don't have to write their contracts under him anymore. They don't have an additional split, that kind of stuff. They're able to just do their business, but he's able to lead them still because of the way that EXP is set up. So there's a lot of different options to be a, a team or you know at least have a revenue share group at EXP that other brokerages don't offer. Great. Any other areas of opportunity that we're missing? Nope. Okay. Are you ready to talk about what to say? Okay. Okay. So when you start down your list, right, you're going to, some of them you're going to know really well. Some of them you're not going to know at all. You're going to know that, hey, I love this agent. I know that they've got a great reputation. So they fit my ideal agent avatar, but I don't know them at all. So I'm going to give you several different scripts. Um, I'm not a big script person, I'm going to be real honest, but, you know, several different talking points that you can use no matter how you know them. 
So I think one of the absolute easiest ways to reach out to someone is right after you do a cross transaction with them, right? So after the cross transaction closes, you're like, hey, Bob, it's Susan. I just wanted to call and say thank you for everything you did to get Main Street to closing. I love working with great agents like yourself, right? Let's go celebrate our closing Starbucks on me. When can you, I want to, you know, just want to talk to you about a couple things. I want to get your opinion on a couple things in the market. Can I, you know, buy you coffee Wednesday at 3 p.m. or Thursday at 8 a.m.? What works better? So that's just a really simple, easy way to say, I love working with you. So I love compliments, right? So anytime you compliment someone, you have to have a sincere compliment though, right? You can't have a really um, nasty transaction and then be like, hey, I love working with you. They're going to know, well, that's bull because it was a bad transaction, right? So have a sincere compliment, but you were very professional. Hey, I know this transaction was really bumpy, but I'm really thankful that everything for everything you did to get us to closing. Have a sincere but, compliment. Go ahead. So Susan, it's, so it's also important, everyone, to set some times because if you say, let's get together and have a coffee sometime, that's not going to happen. You got to mm -hmm. say, you know, pick, pick a couple dates and times and throw those out there. Are you available Thursday at 10 or, or Monday at two, you know, or whatever, whatever, just figure out what times you have available and then just button that, lock that time down immediately uh, because human nature happens. And if you don't have anything set in stone and you can even say like, let me send you a calendar invite or, yes. I mean, so you really need to lock that down. Mm hundred -hmm. percent. Yep. And that's something I think I learned it from Mike Ferry years ago. I think that's who I learned it from. But, you know, give them two options. I'm doing the same thing if I'm selling real estate, right? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I can come and talk to you about selling your house and what your equity position might be. I can meet you, you know, Saturday at 10 a.m. or I can meet you Monday at 6 p.m. What works better, right? We do the same thing, same exact job. <laughs> so, um, okay, after transaction version two, right? So sometimes we just want to kind of get to the point. We're like, I don't really want to pick their brain about something. I just want to talk to them about EXP. They're a great agent. We have a great relationship. I just want to get to the point. So, hey, Bob, it was great doing the transaction with you. You're very professional. I find that sometimes that's kind of rare in this business. Do you find the same thing? Yeah, right? I know. But listen, I know you're getting a lot of calls and you've probably heard about EXP, but have you ever taken a really deep look at how that can truly affect your business and your life? So you can just go straight into the EXP conversation. You've got a great relationship. I don't want to pick their brain. I just want to talk to them about EXP. Now, what happens if, you know, Bob says, oh, yeah, I've heard about EXP. I'm not real interested. Bob, tell me why. That's fine. I, I get that. Why, you know, what didn't you like about the model? Bob, did you take a really deep look at the model? Or is this what you've heard about the company? Because here's what I'm finding, Bob. A lot of brokerages. They're, you know, they're seeing what we're doing. They're seeing how much we're growing. And so they're starting a conversation about who we are as a company that may actually not be true, right? So what have you heard? What didn't you like? Have you actually taken a look at the model or have you heard about the model? So get them to really identify. I say, oh, it's not for me. That's fine. What's not for you? Hey, Bob, can we treat it like this? Let's treat it like a backup offer. I think I talked about that last time we did this, right? Yep. We talked about a backup offer. That was something I learned from Randy Bird. Great guy, love him a lot. But um, he says, you know, treat, and he used to say, you know, plan B. I've recruited to a plan B for years and years and years, right? That's fine. You're happy where you're at, Bob. I'll just be your plan B. But I love what Randy did. He said, you know what, let's just treat this like a backup offer. Why don't I put a backup offer on your desk and it can sit there and gather dust. You don't even have to respond to it. But if something ever changes, my backup offer is there. And who's going to say no to a backup offer, right? Have you guys, did any of you use that since the last time that we talked about it? No, I love Great. that though, but I haven't used it. <laughs> Great love verbiage. It. Yes. To have, yeah, in your back pocket. You can also use it when they're like, I'm just, I'm happy where I'm at. Or I love my broker. That's one I used to get a ton. Mm -hmm. Great. I love it when my agents love me too, right? That's that's what I want. We, or as brokers, we're, you know, as leaders, whatever you want to call it, we want our agents to like us. But who do you like more, yourself or your broker? If your broker got the opportunity to make a transition that was better for them, do you think your broker might take it? And I'm a great example of that. I was with my company for 11 years and I got a better opportunity and I took it, right? 
And then again, you can go to that backup offer. You love your broker, Bob, that's great. Stay with your broker forever. Let me just put a backup offer on your desk and it can sit there. Okay, so we talked about cross transaction agents. Um, let's talk about someone who's recently changed their brokerage. And know anyone who you might wanna work with who just made, made a recent change, right? So Bob, I just wanted to see how are things going since you joined XYZ Brokerage? Tell me about your business. What are your goals? If you hit your goals, Bob, what would that do for your life, for your family, right? What's your plan to hit those goals? Who's helping you get those goals, Bob? Is someone in your brokerage helping you do that? Great, how are they helping you? So really take a deeper dive into their business. What are they trying to accomplish? Who's helping them? Who's helping them lead the way? So Bob, who else in your brokerage has hit those same goals? Is that person helping you? Bob, what if you could do 20% more than that, 50% more than that and still have a life? Is that something you would be interested in? What if I introduced you to someone who's done double what you've done from a production standpoint, but guess what? They're not working near as hard. They've got the income. They've got twice the income that you're trying to hit, but they're working less hours than you are. Would that be, would, would that be interesting to you just to meet them and talk to them about what they're doing and how they got there? Does that make sense? Bob, I've got a great support system at my brokerage. Would you like to jump on a call? And I'll show you some of the things that have worked for me, or I'll introduce you to someone, right? Who's helped me get where I am or who's helping me get to where I'm going or who's done what you want to do. We all have people we can call. Okay, I talk a lot. I'm gonna stop for a second. What questions do you have? <laughs> I'll take a breath. I'm just rewriting my list as you're talking. <laughs> I'm segmenting just with all the things you said about awesome. maybe someone who just switched because there's people I know that just switched. I'm like, they just switched. I know. And then, and then we don't yeah, just it. check in with them. Like, how's it going? You know, because yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of times they, they might have just switched, but they're really like they haven't gotten traction there and they yeah. feel like they're sometimes they mm -hmm. the switch like didn't do what they thought it was. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a great that's a great one. Is there a way to search for people that just switch? No, probably not. You just have to kind of know who they are. Yeah, if you subscribe to Broker Metrics, you can. Um, can you, you do can that do in Broker that Metrics? In yeah. In Broker Metrics. Okay. But um, sometimes you have to be a broker to get it. I don't know in your market. So everything. Yeah, we, I, I, have, we have I it. have it. We have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, yeah, I feel like there was something else I was going to say, but I lost it. So, okay, we'll just keep going. How's that? <laughs> I have another strategy that, that help that works is that you could lean on someone like myself to call for, let, let's say that you did a transaction with someone that you really liked, but I think a lot, a lot of newer agents feel like I'm too new and someone like them will never want to, you know, sign up with me because I'm a, like a newer agent. So I will call for you guys and I have a great like intro. So let's just say I'm calling Susan and I would say, Hey, Susan, this is Lee Moretis. I got your number from Ann Dalton. And I heard you were just, you're just a total rock star agent. And like that kind of paying them a huge compliment right away, loosens them up and opens them up um, for the conversation. Definitely. So I think that that's just a good, good way to break the ice. I love that. And I will tell you a story too, and this just happened. Um, there was a really large independent brokerage that had been called by some of our top agents and our top recruiters, right? Our top attractors within our company. And that top or that broker owner was like, nope, I'm good. I'm good. You know, maybe he kind of listened a little bit. But then a new agent in business less than a year actually had a relate in the same market, had a relationship with that broker owner and that brokerage, that entire brokerage is joining now under that new agent because they had the relationship. So I love what Lee said. Definitely, you know, use the people in around you and in your network to help you call and make those those calls and those transitions. I'll help you if you need my help, but also don't discount a relationship. Because at the end of the day, attracting agents is literally just having a relationship with them. It's truly caring about them. It's serving them. It's how can I help you? Um, how, who can I introduce you to that can help you? Even if I'm a new agent and I've got this independent brokerage, I've never owned a brokerage, but who can I introduce you to to help you? 
right? Mm -hmm. So just, and, and I use this, um, I use this analogy. I've never said it al aloud, so it might sound really stupid. I don't know, but I use this analogy in my head, in my own head, when I would overthink attracting, right? Or recruiting. I would over, I'm a constant overthinker when it comes to, am I going to say the right thing? And who should I call? And who shouldn't I call? And what am I going to do? I used to, but I would go, always go back to my first day of kindergarten. So I was super scared, very introverted. You know, I mean, we're all scared to go to kindergarten, but um, you know, I was like really, really like crying nervous. And my, I didn't know how I was going to make friends. I'd never had to make a friend before. And my mom said, Susan, just be yourself, go up to someone on the playground and just say, Hey, do you want to be my friend? And, and it worked. And so I'm actually still really good friends with the first person that I met at my first day of kindergarten. I'm not saying go up to someone and say, do you want to be my friend? But what I'm saying is don't make it so complicated, right? Just ask, you know, how am I going to, if I, if we take real estate out of the equation, how would I get to know this person? How, what questions would I ask them? And just approach the like you want to become their friend and not that you want to recruit them to EXP or attract them to the brokerage. Okay. Now, what about um, agents that you know? So I'm, I'm going down my list. I've called my cross transaction agents. I've got them, you know, marked off. I've, I've got how long, however long I'm going to follow up with them. So agents I know, but I've not done a cross transaction. I'm not super good friends with them. So what am I going to say to them? So, um, Okay, so um, I think a great way to make a just a general phone call to someone that I know is, hey, Bob, it's Susan from eXp Realty. What's up? Do you have a second? So everyone says we're in a changing market. I just wanted to check in and see how your business is going. Have you felt a change, Bob? I'm really curious. You know, have you felt a change in what you're doing every day? What changes are you seeing in your clients? What changes are you seeing in how long your listings are sitting on the market? Right. And so I start with that question and Bob's going to go, oh yeah, well, here's what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? I'm going to say, well, here's what I'm seeing, but you know what? I've got this great support system and they're really helping me. And I just didn't know if, you know, what I was seeing versus what someone else was seeing, what might be a little bit different. So ultimately the path that you're going to take someone down looks like this. And it really doesn't matter what you say when you first start that conversation, but the path looks like, where are you going? Like, how's your business, right? But then where are you taking your business? Um, how will that impact your business or your life when you get there? Um, how will you get there? Do you have a path? Is your path laid out? Who's helping you get there? Who in your office is helping you get there, right? Those are two different questions. So who's going to help you get there? Maybe they've got a real estate coach. Who in your office is helping you get there? Maybe someone, maybe no one. And then here, can I introduce you to someone who might be able to help you get there? Because at the end of the day, when I'm serving someone, I'm helping someone, I'm connecting people, just be a great connector of people and you'll be super successful in this business of agent attracting. And go into it with that. Who can I connect you with that you might wanna meet? And if I go into every single call with that, and I can even use that as my, as my script, right? Hey, I just wanted to call and check in and see how business is going. We're in a changing market. What are you noticing? Hey, who can I connect you with that you might want to talk to that might be able to help you? I love that. I mean, that just, that makes me think about like yesterday, uh, Isaiah Colton had a mastermind uh, and he just gave out 14 or 18 different lead uh, sources where, you know, you have to pay a referral fee, but it was, and I, and like, that's available to everyone on here. Like that, it, it was just amazing. And like, who else, like what other group was willing to just share stuff like that to really help you build your business? And I mean, and, you know, we have all those resources available to all of us to really help just get people engaged uh, at that level. It's just, you know, it's amazing. And that's on top of what EXP already offers. So, I mean, you know, I'm fortunate to be, you know, in, you know, partners with Isaiah and you know, everyone here. It's just, it's amazing. Isaiah, I need to meet you. I, I keep hearing these great things about you. So I need to, I need to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I it's good it. to, I, I love what, I love uh, your training. I'm taking a ton of notes. So awesome. I can tell you're awesome what you do. 
Aw, thanks. Okay, so we talked about agents I know, agents I've done cross transactions with. What about agents I wanna know? Okay, so this person, I, I really don't know them at all, but I've heard that they're a great agent and they're in my, they're my avatar. So what am I gonna say to them? So here's something, if I'm a, especially if I'm a newer agent, right? And I've got this rock star agent and I'm dying to get them on the phone, but maybe, you know, Lee's on vacation and I don't want to wait. <laughs> so I've got to make the call myself. So, hey, Bob, I just wanted to call you really quick. This is Susan with eXp Realty. You know what? You're a game changer. I just really would love to get to know you. Can I take you to coffee and just, you know, get to know you? And I would love to hear your story. By the way, that's a great line to use with anyone. I would love to hear your story. Because who doesn't want to tell their story? If I'm, a, if I'm a rock star agent and I've got a new agent that calls me, and says, I want to hear your story. Am I going to go? I am going to go because number one, they're stroking my ego. And what do top agents love more than anything is for the, how their ego stroked. But then number two, if I'm a, if I'm a rock star agent, I remember being a new agent and I remember wanting to be a rock star agent. And if I'm seeing other agents, newer agents, and they're reaching out to me going, Hey, how can I, how can I become you? 99 out of 100 of those agents are going to meet with that new agent. So that's a, I think that's a great line to use. You're a game changer. I'm just calling to get to know you. I'd love to hear your story, right? Calling to get to know you a little bit. Um, I've heard great things about you and how you do business. Um, if you don't know them and you want to go straight into like that whole EXP, like, I'm like, all right, all right, I just, I just want to go to get, get the, um, what, get the ball on the court, but there was an analogy there and I dropped it. But anyway, um, but if you just want to go straight into the EXP, um, you know, standpoint of the conversation, hey, you know, agents typically will make a move in the fourth quarter, right, Bob? And that's when agents start kind of stop and they look at their business and they go, am I completely happy where I am? And Bob, I would love to have a conversation with you. Sit down, I'll take you to coffee. Let's talk about where your business is, where you're taking it. I'd love to see if we can help you at EXP to reach all of your goals in 2023. So you can just go straight into the EXP conversation if you want to. So I'm calling to learn about your business and where you're taking it. See how we can help. What about agents in a different market? Does anyone call agents in a different market? Does anyone want to call agents in a different market? <laughs> so you should, right? You should be calling agents in a different market. So when you make that phone call, obviously it's just a blind phone call, right? You may have their production or heard great things about them or seen their reviews on Zillow or Realtor.com. But hey, I'm Susan McLean with eXp Realty, I was calling because I look for markets with opportunity. I'm looking for the right person. I think there's a ton of opportunity in your market and I'm looking for someone who wants to grow and help others. Would you be open to having a conversation with me? Let's do a Zoom call, 20 minute Zoom call here in the next week. I can do Wednesday or Thursday. So I'm looking for markets with opportunity. So if I'm in, a, if I'm in my market and someone calls me and says, I think there's opportunity in your market, where does my head go? Ooh, she sees opportunity in the market. Wonder if she sees opportunity that I don't see. What is she seeing that I'm not seeing? What numbers is she looking at? What's she looking at? And so as agents, we wanna know what are, what's someone else seeing? What is that opportunity that someone else is seeing in our market? Make sense? Any questions? Okay, I'm just gonna keep talking. Um, and I wanna get to something here really quickly. So let's go through one more thing. And then I wanna talk about an upfront contract um, because I think that's really, really key when you sit down and actually meet with, uh, with these agents. So um, we'll go through one other thing first and that's just conversation starters. So as you are at events and meeting agents, have some of these conversation starters in your back pocket because you know, other than, hey, how are you doing? How's the coffee, right? I mean, we need something to really take them down the path that we want them to go down. So, hey, you know, Bob, good to see you here at the, you know, the Board of Realtors meeting. Hey, do you think the industry is changing? I would love to get your perspective. What are you seeing in the market right now? Um, where do you think the industry is going, the real estate industry is going over the next five years? That's a great question. Because where do we think it's going? It's going virtual, right? We all know it. We look at the, uh, the companies entering the space right now and almost all of them have a virtual platform like EXP does. Um, what do you think of Zillow? 
That's um, a loaded you question. Them, you what? That's a loaded question. <laughs> right? But will it get them talking? 100%, right? So have these conversation starters ready to use at um, the next event that you're, you know, that you're going to, your Board of Realtors events, right? Um, okay, so we've got about 15 minutes left here. So I want to talk about an upfront contract. Does anyone use upfront contracts or know what they are? So an upfront contract is a sales technique, and it's actually a Sandler sales technique. So I took uh, like a 12-month Sandler sales uh, selling course, and it's fantastic, you guys. We can do a whole training on this. Um, I use it for listing, and I teach it for listing presentations, but we'll talk about how to use it for attraction now. So the upfront contract is very simple. Um, and I wish I, I'm working from the state office, so I don't have my, my whiteboard behind me. I need to draw this out. Um, I've got a great way to remember it. But essentially what you do is you start out by saying, thanks for meeting with me. That's kind of point number one is thank you. Very simple. Point number two is um, tell them how long this meeting will last. So thanks for meeting with me, Bob. I've set aside an hour to meet with you today. Um, does that time frame work for you? So Bob's going to say, sure. Great. And great. I find in that time that I can cover the things that I want to cover, you know, get information about you and your business and where you're where you're taking your business. And in that time, I can also answer all the questions that you've got about you know, me, my business, the company that I'm working for, you know, whatever. So thank you. I've set aside an hour. Um, the so speaking of, you know, all the things that you want to learn about my business or EXP Realty. What are the top three things that you'd like me to touch on today while we're here together about EXP? And Bob might say, you know, what's the splits? How much are the fees? What kind of, what does your training look like, right? I mean, whatever those top three things are. Great. Now, throughout our time together, Bob, I'm going to ask you some questions about your business, things like what your goals are, um, how you're getting there, you know, who might be helping you, things like that. Are you comfortable if I ask you those questions, Bob? And Bob's going to say, sure. Great. And similarly, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have for me too. And at the end, this is the most important part. At the end of our time together, Bob, I find that one of three things might happen or always happens. So number one is that I might find that our business models aren't a fit, right? I can't take you or help you get where you want to go in business. If I find that that's the case, can I tell you no upfront without being offensive to you in any way, Bob? And so Bob's going to go, well, yeah, but Bob's also thinking, well, why wouldn't she want to work with me, right? So you're creating scarcity. Option two is that sometimes, Bob, you find that we're not a fit. Our business models aren't a fit. And I'm just going to ask you, Bob, if you find that EXP Realty or working with me and my organization, if we're not a fit for you and your business, all I ask is that you tell me that right away up front. And I won't be offended, right? I'm going to give you an out and you're on a... I'm fine with that. Option three, though, what typically happens is that we both decide that we might be a good fit and we decide to continue talking and going down this path. Does that work for you, Bob? And Bob's going to say, sure. And then you start into your conversation. Thanks, Bob. So tell me. Tell me about your business. How many transactions have you done this year? What percent are buyers? What percent are sellers? Right? Where do you think you're going to end the year? Are you starting a team? I mean, all of those questions about their business. But I'm saying thank you for meeting with me. I've set aside an hour. Um, in that time, we're going to answer all of your questions. What are the top three things you want to cover while we're here today? You can ask me any question that you want, Bob. I'm here and open for you. And then one of three things will happen at the end of our meeting. I'm going to tell you no. You're going to tell me no. Or we're going to say yes, we want to keep going down this path. Does that make sense? I feel like I kind of butchered that a little bit. But. No, you didn't. No, it was perfect. It's perfect. It was fast and yeah, it was fast and furious, but I took a lot of notes. Yeah, it's like um, let's not beat around the bush here, and also it takes them off the like kind of the defensive. It's like yeah, you know what? It could be this, it could be that, or hopefully we continue working together. You know, it takes um, they don't feel like they're put on the spot because they can say no too. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, I and really, I would, what's that? Anna? Sorry, I also really liked how you said um to the first option that like I might not think that you're a great fit like the whole creating scarcity thing it kind of flips the script on that a little bit because a lot of people I feel like are already on edge and like wanting to say no I don't want to be recruited to so if you kind of like change their perspective like I may not choose you that's mm -hmm. major I never thought of that 
yeah, it's and you can use it in your listing contract, your listing presentations too. Um, but when you can even say, you know, what I want to avoid here today, Bob, is a place where you know what, we're not saying yes, but we don't want to say no out of, you know, I don't want to offend you. You don't want to offend me, right? Like neither one of us wants to be in this position. So let's just get it up front. Either one of us can say no, or we can decide yes, that we want to keep talking and going down that path. So, so upfront contracts are fabulous to use and attraction and your listing presentations. Anytime you're sitting down with someone, and you're trying to negotiate something, right? You're creating this balance. Um, and so they're just, they're fantastic. So we can take that deeper on another meeting if you want to, but I wanted to make sure we had enough time to cover that. Okay, last 10 minutes. So um, what questions do you guys have? I can keep talking, but I'm gonna stop. I guess let's let's open it up and see if anyone's having like what are your guys struggles like what what what's your hardest like I don't know is is it like is it like imposter syndrome I know that's a big thing for a lot of people it's like you know I, I'm you know who am I no one's going to want to join with me like why would you know why would somebody want to do that and you know does is, are do people have that feeling and and like how can we help you overcome that feeling? Yes, to imposter syndrome. Um, my thing I have in my head, the first thing that pops up that I think of is like, I don't know 100 agents. I don't even know 50 agents. And the agents I do know, a lot of them are already EXP. Okay. So make your list. I mean, it might just be production-based. Um, can you track an agent's production in your MLS? Yes. Okay. So it might just be production-based. So you make a list of agents who are doing one to $3 million in production. You can also look at um, agents who are maybe at independent brokerages and are doing that one to $3 million in production if you need to narrow it down, right? Um, and I'm not targeting independent brokerages, but I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stereotype and say typically, right? The broker owner selling, um, there's typically not as much structured training and support and you know tools and resources and that kind of stuff because it takes a ton of money to provide all those tools and resources. So you might just start there, Anne. And then also get involved in your local board of realtors. There typically are more affiliates than agents at those events, um, but um, get to know those affiliates, right? Because you get to know a couple of great lenders or title people or home warranty reps, and you can ask them and say, you know what, I really enjoy, you know, getting to know you. And who do you know? Which agents do you know in our market that you think I might need to meet? So use those affiliate relationships and ask for referrals too. And those affiliates, they know who's unhappy. Trust me, they know before their broker knows, they know before the spouse knows. So get to know them. So I have a question. So are there any particular brokerages, like maybe the larger ones, like not independent, that you see coming over, like maybe with higher fees, um, any pattern? Um, we're seeing a lot um, across the nation. We're seeing a lot of Keller Williams Market Center owners and a lot of Remax um, brokerages coming over to EXP. Those are probably, if I had to narrow it down to the top two brokerages, brands um, that are transitioning, that's that's it. So the entire brokerage you're talking about, perhaps yes. there's- I'm talking the, Yes, I'm talking about Mark Keller Williams Market Center owners coming over to EXP. Um, by the way, there is a great, um, so Jarek Robbins is the success um, coaching, he's head success coaching. And so um, we've been on a couple calls and he was talking about the Keller Williams Market Center owners and a great opportunity with them where a lot of those market center owners, they gave up selling, right? As their market centers grew, they stopped selling to be able to support and you know work with all those agents. But in a changing market, a normalizing market like we're in, their margins are getting thinner and thinner. Um, Keller Williams typically is having a lot of turnover right now, right? They're adding a lot of agents, but they're losing just as many agents. And so those market center owners are getting a little nervous. So Jarek was talking about, if you know, if, um, they're typically great coaches, right? Those market center owners, they're spending a lot of time coaching their agents. So if we can get them into success coaching as a coach and then help them get their market center over to EXP, that's a great opportunity um, 
there. So if you want to go deeper into that, if you know any market center owners, I'm happy to go deeper offline. But um, that's a great, great opportunity for those who are great at coaching is to get them involved in success coaching too. What about the person that says, okay, that's fine. I can set up that coffee date with Bob. But when I get there, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I'm good enough to sell him on the concept. I, I, I struggle with that. I don't know. I don't know enough. I don't know enough to be, to be good at that. So I'm not going to set the coffee appointment because I don't want to blow it. I don't want to blow it. What okay. do you say to that? Um, I'm going to say what Einstein said. And he said, if I had to solve a problem, I would, and I had an hour to solve a problem, I would spend 90 or not 95, 55 minutes math. I would spend 55 minutes asking great questions and then five minutes solving the problem. So you're not selling them at that coffee. You are asking them questions about their business. And once you ask them deep questions, you take notes, you really think about their business. Not You're not sitting there thinking about the next thing to say, but you really are listening to them and you're forming a relationship with them. The solution will appear, right? Because everyone has problems in their business. And if you're just asking those questions, your job is not to sell them on eXp is to say, gosh, so in the last 55 minutes, you know, you've talked five times about you're not able to, um, to get as many listings as you want to get, right? You're losing listings. Do you want me to, would it be beneficial to you if I connected you with someone who is great at converting those listing appointments? Would that be beneficial? Would you like to meet them and just kind of see what they do? And Bob's going to say what? Yeah. Um, yes. And connect me with the person who can close more listings than I am right now. And at the end of the day, you're, you're helping them and once they see that there are people in place at EXP who can help them reach all of their goals and solve those problems, those business problems, it's a no-brainer for them. Would you like to be a guest on one of our accountability calls? Would you like to be a guest on one of our high-level masterminds uh, and coaching calls? So all those things, we have those in place uh, because they're probably not getting it where they're at. I mean, we're, like we're, we're doing all this work and we're, we've, we've built this huge foundation and we just need you guys to plug in to that, to what we've already built. And it's way more than they're getting anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's when you follow up with them, right? So if you make those initial reach outs and someone is a one on you know scale of one to 10 on how interested they are on, at EX, for, on, for EXP, um, I'm gonna follow up with them in four months, but what am I gonna do? I'm going to invite them Hey, Bob, it's Susan. I just want to, you know what? You just popped in my brain the other day. I was thinking about you and we're having this great mastermind um, at our company. And here's what the topic is. And I think, you know, I think it might be beneficial. Would you like me to invite you to, you know, be a guest at that? So and then you have like something to talk about after. You can say, hey, what did you think? Susan, what did you think of the mastermind? I thought those three tips that were given were amazing or this or that, you know, or I didn't agree with this. So you're, you're, you're creating dialogue and you're not the out of breath recruiter, you're establishing a relationship uh, with that person. Yep. And what did you like best about the mastermind? What did you like best about the level up training? Um, you know, what did you like best about this or that? Um, and get them focused on what benefit they got out of it. I think that's a great way to lead into, um, you know, their business and, you know, how would you implement that in your business where you're, where you're at right now? So you're just asking those questions. And I would say to you guys, you know, and, and I do this too, you got to, you got to be fired up about this, right? I mean, I love my EXP and sometimes I have, I just have to go back and listen to the talking points. And so I'll just go back and watch the model explained again, or I'll watch Gene Frederick's napkin presentation again and be like, oh my gosh, like how could anybody say no to this? you have to have that mindset. You have to be fired up. You have to be enthusiastic, right? And so that whole, you know, ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice. You can just, it's not what you say. It's like how excited you are about it. And so if I ever, for any reason, feel, question anything about anything about EXP, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to hear it all over again for myself. So and then I secondly, just... yeah, don't go at this alone either. Like, don't go at this alone. Like after this call in two minutes, Susan's going to jump on with me with an agent that I already had the, the lunch with. And now we're, we're taking it to the next level. She's helping me from here. 
and we're going to finish this thing up. So yeah, you don't don't help. be don't do it on your on your own. I mean, we're I mean, we probably could have closed this this agent on our own, but you know, we we no, want to show. No, you've got to bring in third third party validation yep. Yep. every every Absolutely. single time. Every single time, it's going to close the deal. So. Don't so do it alone. Speaking of um, talk, like listening to others, so I got a sneak peek yesterday. Um, marketing is putting together a series of videos, um, and they're not fully finished yet. They're not branded yet, but I got the sneak peek yesterday, and it's just um, it's some of our top agents telling their story about why they came to the company and how it changed their life. And you guys, I was in tears. I'm not exaggerating. Like goosebumps, tears. So excited to see these come out, and they're they're almost there. And we could go on and on about creating yeah. your own story, right? So, yep. <laughs> that we, um, all right, anyway, everyone, you guys, there'll be like Agent Traction Part Three. I yeah. think there's this. Well, let's do let's on do the on, next but, one. And yeah. we wanted to uh, we wanted to try to do a recurring uh, event, Susan. If if uh, if you're available, if we can find a time that you have available, uh, like on a weekly or by or you know every other week basis. So we'll we'll talk about that on our next call in in a, in a minute, but. I definitely would love to um, to have you, you know, to help us to to really, you know, so our agents can bring people to. Okay, yeah, we'll talk about that and see what that might look like. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, okay. everyone. It is eleven o'clock. We, we got to jump yep. off, but thanks you guys for joining. And Thank you so much. And then questions. this will be the recording will be available for everyone too.